So, you want to make some money and you're curious how is it possible that Biragi can make you 1.2 billion per hour. Or maybe you're here just because I didn't upload anything in 7 months and you're curious where I've been all this time. But let's just assume you are fresh out of season, you have no gear or barely any, and you're curious is it really possible to make 1.2 billion with season gear. And the answer is yes, because Marni Biragi is a thing. Emphasis on Marni. Why you might ask? Why is it important that you do it in Marni? Well, let's just say for the past month or so, I've been in the mood to do Serendia Elvia, Orcs, Nagas and Biragi, and the main reason why I came back to try them out again after so long is because the Marni room was changed and monsters respawn way faster inside Marni. In, for Biragi in particular, for example, you can do a very short rotation and because the rotation is very small, you can pick up loot from your previous cycle on the next one, essentially making your pets loot way more efficiently because the rotation is so small. So yes, it is very important to do Biragi in Marni and it's kind of the only recommendable Biragi nowadays, in my opinion. I spent 11 hours in total here, trying different things, different ideas, grinding faster and faster as the hours went on, my rotation also changed over the hours, and I will have it playing in the background, let's say the best version of it, the very last hour, being the only hour where I actually tried high frame rate, as you can see on screen, with around 120-ish FPS. I wasn't willing to go full potato, just... FSR with performance mode, still 1440p resolution, and the other hours everything else was 60 FPS. I had two hours grinded with season gear to test the point, the, the, the title of the video, see if it's grindable with no real gear, with entry level gear. So let's just say as a conclusion, I really like Guardian, currently I main it, and she really excels here. Awakening Guardian is really good here. And the rotation, exactly how I grind in the background, is how I would recommend you to try out the place. I did try to be fairly consistent with what skills I use on what packs, especially as it is in the background with a weapon enabled when I one-shot anything, just any skill, just one-shots the pack. The ultimate is always consistent on the exact same pack. You could arguably say only the rotation matters and the skills are all big AoEs, so you can interchange them you can use whatever you want here and there but again as a general idea what's in the background that's why I grind it the main idea is full rotation because I need every pack available with a weapon and the rotation shrinks down when you don't have an LVA weapon and the location where I throw my ult also changes but obviously if you don't play guardian none of this truly matters it's just uh, this is how I grind it and on average, at 60 FPS, the bare minimum, and on stream, I get around 24.5 thousand trash on yellow loot scroll. For stats, unlike actual season players, I have maxed out pets, so tier 4s with one tier 5 captain. These are the add-ons that I used on Awakening Guardian. I pretty much have every buff available to me. These are Elvia specific, with as much defense break as possible, and human damage there. And yeah, gear. First, so you can have an idea of what we are aiming for, the AP cap at Biragi is 753 AP, so this is basically all I ever need to get, anything past this is irrelevant, and after the soft cap I just need to put human damage, species damage, or special attack damage. So just remember this, 750-ish AP. With that in mind, I had three versions of my gear throughout my hours. First, the main gear, what I used for most of my hours, with obviously main full 312 AP, human damage artifacts because I already have over the AP cap, so at this point nothing else matters, journals what I had, crystals, I used human damage crystals as many as I had, although it's not the most efficient build because I don't have the, the human damage spirit crystals bought, but besides that, add-ons I showed them earlier, the Elvia ones, and for consumables I had human damage, the perfume of indignation, <laughs> spirit perfume, I mean swiftness perfume just because I don't know weight limit I didn't even need a perfume PvP meal for special attack damage and horse buff because why not I don't think I, I I never bought church buffs but hey they are here in Garmoth because that's how my preset looks like so that's main stuff 
For the season gear there were two versions, this is where it gets a bit more interesting, because I wanted to see if my AP really matters, if the black stars are important, or if I just simply have to hit the AP cap for the spot and I don't necessarily need anything past that, Any anything else is just completely irrelevant. So we have the cheat build and the real build. The cheat one meaning I can use anything other than changing season gear, so 255 AP on season gear, with a Vel's heart, with human damage artifacts, journals stay the same, crystals, human damage crystals, add-ons obviously don't change, my Elvia add-ons and consumables I got these. I allowed myself to have a house buff, the house buff, the church buffs, I used frenzy and perfume of courage, simple crown meal to get to around 700 AP because the, ca the soft cap if you, if you remember it's 753 which means I am almost at the soft cap with the extra 50 from add-ons and self AP buff, 30 from add-on and 20 from self AP buff on guardian, 50 in total. The only thing that's missing here is the indignation perfume for even more human damage but I kinda needed the frenzy to hit the AP cap for the spot. So it kinda goes to show that if you have expensive crystals, basically if you can get AP from other sources, you can still run human damage crystals and artifacts and still hit the AP cap on season gear. In the background this is how I grinded with my season gear run, the cheat one. With a weapon nothing changes, I still one skill everything. Without a weapon I just have to put in a little bit more effort, I can see that my skills do a little bit less damage, maybe 15% less damage or something, but it's, some, it's hardly noticeable, on guardian specifically. I imagine other classes will struggle a bit more. And as expected my clearing speed speed hardly went down, still on stream, still 60 fps, 23.2 thousand rush per hour, going down from 24.5, which at that time was my best. For the other season build, the cheapos, I simulated what a real season player would have, so Perilla Star instead of the Vel, the artifacts changed, I don't have human damage anymore, I went for watch your back, 24 AP, because I don't have the standard monster AP artifact, but this is, this is hardly better in my opinion, so it was close enough at that time. 252 AP, journals don't change, crystals did change to cheapos, essentially what I believe most people can afford, standard homes, standard plus 3 AP crystals, these are cheap nowadays, corrupted, 1 L car, because maybe you need accuracy, this at the base, it's only 50 mil, it's not much, and it's you know, I said this is good value, most people can afford at least this much in terms of crystals. Add-ons didn't change, still Elvia, obviously those are free, and for buffs, simple cron, frenzy and church buffs, and tent buff, that's it. Which brings us to 636 plus another 50 from self buffs, so, so let's say 686, not even 700 AP, aka I am still I don't have human damage and I am below the AP cap for the spot. It kinda goes without saying that in actual grinding, the clip in the background, with a weapon nothing changed, again I still one skill every single pack, so for half of your weapon with an, uh, with an Elvia weapon on Guardian nothing changes, whether you have season gear or full AP. For the other half, without the weapon I did feel even slower, my ult for both of the season builds it doesn't one shot anymore, so it's a bit more annoying, you have to make sure you finish the packs off because you can't just expect them to die and move on, stuff will keep following you and then if you don't kill them in time, monsters reset. In any case, I did grind a bit slower, it was noticeable but nothing unbearable. I believe 21.5 or 21.6 thousand trash per hour at the end which is hardly 10% slower. It might be because of the class reworks, the add-on add -on reworks, just classes nowadays do so much damage because PA keeps buffing the damage on skill, which inevitably if the skills on base do more damage, it means season players over time will do more and more and more damage and more areas become just easier and easier to grind. I believe that's pretty much it in terms of notable things while grinding, so now we can get into the real numbers. Uh, the only one left would be, if people don't know, this is where the well is, the keys. When you kill the Biragi boss, this one, sometimes he drops you keys. For me, with full gear, full speed, I used to get 4 bosses per hour. As my rotation changed and my speed changed, I started getting 5 bosses per hour, which nowadays is my standard. And for 1 hour, the tryhard one with high frame 
stream rate, uh, I got six bosses in one hour, or I think I almost got six. Five and level four uh, for the threat thingy. Regardless, they don't always drop a key, but they often drop keys, and this is where you turn them in. The well, on the map, you go in, you talk to this crate, it gives you random things, sometimes seeds, sometimes just narcs, other times even shards, which are obviously the most important part and why you are here and buy a tent buff. For every single run, it is well worth it to just buy the, the 50 million tent buff. I, you will see later in the numbers part, you make more money than you spend. So the time has finally come. Let me show you the money per hour, the, the brokenness. Let's start with Garmoth, because there's more data to show on Excel. First, trash per hour for every single hour. If you're interested, the best one, again, 26,000 trash, almost, virtually 26, for the double frame rate 120 try hard hour off stream full focus this is the best i got on guardian drop rate buffs for every hour it averages around 279 bonus everything on yellow everything basically an hour there's not not much else to point out here i hear other than 1.2 billion per hour average and 23.6 as it seems but again lately i mean nowadays i can get 26 24, 24.5, these, these two are the season hours, these two, so they are lower, but 24.5 is pretty much a given for me at 60 FPS on stream, just normal grinding, trying to grind well. For the start of the show, the shards 24 on average per hour. Oh yeah, I didn't point this out yet, remember to buy Marnie stones, I keep, I keep forgetting everything in here, all of these numbers are with Marnie stones. I usually feel about five of them per hour on average. It used to be four or four and a half at first, but then it, it, it went on. As the hours went on, it's about five of them per hour. So I get a, a extra five shards every hour from just simply buying and turning in Marnie stones. Do remember to do that. On the Excel side, there are more interesting things to point out, unlike Garmoth. Well, first, I suppose, untaxed items, tax items. You don't really care much about this because it's the same as Garmoth, but just in case. I use the Cup of Earth uh, Sorrow as my cup to make. You just have to find something that sells for max price to make money. I personally have all three types of shards, so that's why I valued my, my shard. Just again, make sure you sell a cup that is worth as much as possible to make as much profit as possible. The loot scroll scaling here seems to be 25% for a blue loot scroll. I am using a different method to calculate this, you will see it later, but let's just say for now 25. Estimations, trash per hour on blue and blue pass agris, you shouldn't do plus blue pass agris, just don't burn agris here because it's not worth it. Again, trash per hour for every single hour and monsters killed from Marnie stones, it did go up and up and up and up after every single hour with just one dip here, but 9.1. 8.8 .8 used to be my best, the try hard hour, 9.7 thousand monsters killed per hour, the 120 FPS one, the two season runs, and estimations with, if I could grind every hour at 26 thousand trash, I would make 2.3. I mean 1.20, 1.3 billion per hour on yellow. And Agris, I changed my method how I calculate Agris efficiency compared to how it used to be in the past. You're, you're burning with the best hour, I use the best 26,000 trash this, this session as my baseline. So trash per hour 26,000, 35 points per mob, mobs killed per hour from Marnie stones, you would burn 340,000 agris per hour, which is, which is obviously impossible, so I guess your points would run, run out in what, 15 to 20 minutes, something like that. Trash per mob, you don't care, loot score efficiency, this one goes up, or let's say it's 88%, I looted 88% of what I killed according to my Marnie stone monsters per hour which is really good but it was 95 or 94 percent for the other runs for one of these here just the try hard hour obviously I tried to go as fast as possible so this efficiency number went down but for most of you it should be around 95 percent and this number was 97 million silver the new efficiency number essentially from now on I'm just gonna calculate how much money do you make per 100,000 agris 
burned. So essentially, in theory, if you burn everything you have, all of your agris in one spot, how much silver does that give you? Just agris, not, not blue plus agris, not yellow plus agris, only agris, which is 91 million silver for biragi as i said earlier 97 if you grind slower and you loot more from the ground is this good is this bad obviously i know from the past from the other efficiency chart i had no it's not worth it don't burn agris here but hey if you want to you can you do you and let's do the loot scroll efficiency next because it ties into what i just talked about earlier about the 25 percent scaling on blue the new way i do it let me know in the comments if this is actually wrong but i doubt it let's say looking in game with yellow loot scroll i get either either two or four trash from the monsters which means on base without it being doubled it's either one or two trash so with blue 50% more because the game rounds down it should be one one becomes one or stays one and two trash becomes three trash so my increase would be nothing for half half of the trash i get and 50 percent for the other half which means on average i get 25 percent more trash compared to not having a loot scroll just blue for today this one is irrelevant it doesn't matter this is the drop rate i had for every single hour i, I took it this from garmoth on average 279 379 with the base 100 percent drop rate i took the numbers here from our previous chart average money per hour trash per hour trash price it converts it into blue because that's how i did the spreadsheet when this well, but this was made like two years ago or something <laughs> and then it splits it into money made from trash and money made from rare items and the but the ideal not just this is the only relevant number you care about if you want to use yellow this on paper should be 200 percent you know ideal scaling perfect scaling double the value of a blue loot scroll but it's not it's only about 54 so it's up to you if you have enough loot scrolls sure you can use yellow if you don't obviously you lose half of the value of the other loot scrolls so just use blue it's up to you the the tenth part what i mentioned earlier this is why i said it's worth it the 50 percent 50 million tenth buff yields you again math wise on paper 105 million silver per hour so it is worth it to buy it and one more stop the last one experience is this place good experience well, let me tell you, my friend, for the past six months on stream, slowly and slowly, I've been working on this, which is still work in progress. Anything you see here, you shouldn't care much about it. Take it with a grain of salt, because this project, just, I, I started updating the big experience project, doing a new one. And it's still missing all of these areas. These are still untested, but out of what is here and what is tested, this was done before the classes got buffed, before the add-on reworks. So everything in trash per hour is not up to date when the project will be done in the future. I will have to rescale everything, but let's just say Biragi, today's topic. It used to be 7.4 thousand mobs per hour. Now I kill like 9000 so i kill them much faster but is it good experience wise yeah it's not broken but it is good you can use experience scrolls most people know this already but the point is if you're a season player if you want to level up if you want experience yeah you can pop experience scrolls here for skill points it's meh it's whatever it's not complete trash but nobody cares about skill points anyway so let's just say it's whatever it's meh and I believe that pretty much wraps up everything. I feel like there were too many things I talked about in this video. It might end up being long. I forgot to say, if you're since you're using Marnie Stones and those turn into money per hour in Elvia, it I, I would highly recommend you to grind as fast as you can. It is obviously beneficial to kill more monsters per hour just even if your trash per hour doesn't exactly go up with more monsters killed you feel more barney stones which equals more money more shards right and um yeah th i think that's it i had a good time here guardian awakening is such a chill class it's with my main I, I love her at the moment too bad that they announced scholar and she looks amazing and she, she's i think i'm just gonna main scholar in a week so um guardian had a fun run she, she, yeah you, you get what i'm trying to say I will see you guys next time with the better brother of Biragi, the more broken one, Orcs. I already tested Orcs, it's pretty much done, I just have to do math and then edit it. 
but um, let's just say it, it, it's more broken than uh, Biragi. So if you think this is good, then Orcs is better. And then there's Nagas as well to talk about. Hmm, what a world do we live in? In any case, I hope you enjoyed this. Leave a like if you did. It helps me a lot. I, I didn't upload any videos in over half a year. At this point, YouTube thinks I'm dead. Most people might think I'm dead. So a any uh, feedback, any engagement will definitely help. Likes, comments, all of that. It, it will help to, to remind people I'm still alive. But yeah, I will catch you guys um, with orcs or on stream. Hey, by the way, you know what? I forgot to point out. I was supposed to, to remind people, hey, nowadays, that's why I've been dead here for so long, because I stream on Twitch. Nowadays, I stream on Twitch way more actively than I do, than I make YouTube videos. Maybe the by say hello, see if what I'm up to, you know, talk to me and such. If you miss me, find me on Twitch. Bye-bye.